Hey y'all, Brooke Miller here. Wanted to send you this quick video about what's been happening in the local real estate market so far this year. So the numbers I'm sharing with you is as of October 1st, 2022. And I think you're gonna be surprised. Stay tuned. So I know you're hearing headlines. Sales are down. Prices are being reduced. It's taking longer to sell. Interest rates are up. Demand is down, but they're not telling you the entire story. And they're also not telling you what's happening here locally. They're only telling you what they see on the national front. And they're telling you what they want you to hear because it gets them advertising dollars. Now, there is some truth in some of this, but I'm here to put it into perspective. So I have run the numbers from January through September 30th, 2022. I'm comparing it to 2021, which was the most unusual year in real estate. And 2020 was the most unusual year in real estate that created 2021. So in addition to comparing 2022 to 2021, I'm actually going to compare it to the last normal real estate year, which was 2019, just a couple of years ago. And what's fascinating is real estate agents and lenders and consumers and economists, they kind of forget what was going on when we had a normal market and a normal economy. I know things are in flux right now, uh, but one point I want to make to you is 70% of the real estate agents that currently have their real estate license, 70% have never sold homes in a normal real estate market. So if you interview 10 people, only three have been through a normal real estate market. And that is what we have right now. Actually, it's better than normal, but that's what we have right now. The other thing is 80% of all the loan officers have never operated in a environment where the refinance is not the number one piece of their business. So you're gonna start hearing about a lot of loan officers leaving the business and it's because nobody's refinancing. And if that's where they've built their business, they have nothing in the pipeline. They may not even have enough knowledge to take care of people who are looking to buy a home with a mortgage. So keep that in mind as you are hearing updates from other folks. You know, I look at the facts. I have the facts right here. I did not make this up. I literally printed this out from the multiple listing system. The numbers were done for me. I am just interpreting them and telling you what it says. And we'll put it over on the slides over here so you can see what's happening. In 2022, you're not gonna believe this, but in the entire Fredericksburg area, which is Stafford, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, King George, Orange County, and Caroline County, the average sales price of a detached single family home is, get this, $482,260. That's amazing. The average attached home, so that's condos, and townhouses, those are selling on average for just under 350, $348,884. Now, that is 11.5% above 2021, okay? Compared to the last normal year, which is 2019, it's up 41%, okay? But let's go back to the year that the real estate market tanked and that was in 2007. So in 2007, the average detached house was costing $356,000 and the average attached home was selling for $240,000. So between 2007 and 2022, that's actually a 35% increase in value over 15 years, which averages out to 2.3% a year in increase. That is pretty normal. A three to 5% increase every single year average is totally normal. And I'll say 
our prices now are probably not as high as they should be. So I will share my forecast for 2023 later on this year, but I want you to keep that in mind. We really tanked, as you know, until 2010. And then in 2010, we started to build back up, but we tanked so far, we had a lot of catching up to do. And these last two and a half years really made up for that. So to keep it in mind, over the last 15 years, your home value has gone up about two and a half percent every single year. I think that's a lot easier to stomach. When sellers are negotiating with buyers, now they're actually negotiating. As a matter of fact, on average so far this year, a seller is getting right about at their listing price. So whatever their original listing price is, on average, that's what they're getting. So on average, that means some are getting more, some are getting less, but on average, they're getting about 100%. Last year, they were getting about one to 2% more. So that's a little change. And so that's why you're hearing prices are going down. Well, that's because people aren't over inflating their offers. They're offering at the value and they're selling at the value. So the prices are going down, but the values are staying pretty steady. Check out my video on price versus value and you will understand. In 2019, our last normal market year, a seller was selling their home for about 97.5% below the listing price, which means they're negotiating about 2.5% off the listing price, either 2.5% in the seller subsidy, 2.5% in a closing cost credit, or they're actually just selling the house for 2.5% below the price. That's actually kind of normal. It's on a little bit of negotiation there. Back in 2007, Houses were selling at 94.3%. They were selling for almost 6% less than the listing price. So that meant they were selling for less than the listing price and they were also offering seller subsidy at the same time. So we are in a much better market right now for sellers. Average time on market. This year so far, 18 days is the average time on market. Last year, it was 13. So it's taking an extra business week for a home to sell. Instead of two weeks, it's taking just about three weeks. But to put it in perspective, in 2019, it was taking 51 days. That was the average for January through September of 2019, which was a very normal year. And it was taking 51 days to sell a house. But get this, 2007, it was taking 88 days, nearly three months to sell a house. So I think we're still in great territory. Here is the real kicker. Right now, there are a total of 939 houses on the market in the area. Now that sounds like a lot. In 2019, there were 1,524 houses on the market at the exact same time. Basically 600 houses more. Basically 30% more houses were on the market available to sell. And here puts it in really, really big comparison. In 2007, on October 1st, there were 3,422 houses on the market in the same exact area. That is 300% more than what we see on the market right now. We are not going in to a crash, guys. We are not. So there's 939 houses on the market. How long is it gonna take for all 939 to sell? That's what we call our demand curve. And the way we measure our demand curve is we look at how many homes sell on average in a month and compare that to how many homes are on the market. And then the resulting number is how many months of supply we still have on the market. So the lower the number, the higher the demand, the more seller market, the higher the number, the more of a buyer market. So right now, a detached house, we're selling about 548 of those a month on average. There are less than 5,000 sales of detached homes so far this year. So the demand has been a 1.7 month supply, which means it is a very strong seller's market still today. In 2019, it was just under a three month supply. A three month supply to me is a normal market 
we're mm, it's not really a buyer's market it's not really a seller's market it's pretty normal maybe a little bit more in the seller favor which is kind of normal i think so three months supply in 2019 we have about half of that right now 2007 over 11 months it was going to take almost a year for every single house to sell see we are not in a market decline you are going to hear that the number of sales is down it's absolutely down we only have 939 houses to sell we had 1500 to sell in 2019 so yes the number of homes that are selling are down. What you will hear is the number of sales are down. That is the number. One, two, three, four, five. Five houses, six houses, not the value. It will be down this year, and it is down compared to last year because we have fewer houses to sell. You will hear that prices have gone up, but at a very small pace. I expect the comparison to average out to about nine to 10% above last year by the end of the year. Most of that was done at the beginning of the year. And then we had prices going down a little bit, which made it average out to right now it's 11%, but it'll probably be a little bit less at the end of the year. And absolutely, it's gonna be taking more time to sell a house. There are fewer buyers out there. It's just taking more time to do that but I don't think we're getting to 90 days. So here is my advice to you. If you're thinking about buying, it is a great time to buy. I know you're nervous about the interest rates, but you know what? The interest rates change. The houses don't necessarily change. If you find something that you really would like, or if you need to move to the area, my recommendation is let's get together and talk. Let's look at your situation and put a plan together to determine what the best plan of action is. It might be that you just need to rent for a little bit. It might mean that you need to buy and then plan on refinancing as soon as the rates go down. It might mean that you save as much money as possible so you have a larger down payment and so you're financing a smaller portion of your purchase. And it also might mean you might be looking at a loan assumption, which is an awesome tool that is available to everybody, but especially to our veteran buyers. Check out my video on loan assumptions to learn more. As a seller, I put a video together earlier this year with tips on how a seller should prepare for the current market. As a seller, you need to start planning to sell your home way in advance. You can't decide right now to put your house on the market next week and you're moving at the end of October. That is not gonna happen. You need to plan probably an extra two or three months earlier than when you actually want to move. And if you need to do things to get your house ready, because buyers are expecting your house to be move in ready, if you're planning on doing some things to get your house ready, we need to get that on the schedule now. Let's take advantage of the winter months Let's take advantage of the fact that supply chains are coming back. Yes, you can get materials. People are looking for work again. People are doing work on homes. I'm having one of my rental houses renovated. I had no problems getting supplies. I had no problems getting people to do the work. So if you need to do stuff like that, let's plan on doing that now. So you are poised and ready to take advantage of the market this next year, which will probably be a very normal market. If you are renting right now, and one thing I want you to consider is your rent and what an equivalent mortgage payment would be uh, based on your rent payment. If you had that as a mortgage payment, what, how much home could you purchase right now? And here is the really cool thing about thinking about it that way. Let's say you have a $2,700 a month rent payment. When the interest rates go back down to about four, you're gonna be able to afford a $500,000 house at the exact same payment you're doing right now. When the rates are at seven, you're probably affording less of a house. Here's the beauty, buy the smaller 
house, you will rack up a ton of equity in that house, and you'll probably be able to pay it off even sooner. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I will be having some seminars in the beginning of the year. I'm going to be partnering with my financial advisor who is pretty much like a Ramsey trusted person just like I am. And we're gonna help you guys pay off your debt. We're gonna help you pay off your house. And we're gonna help you make awesome plans to protect your financial future in this economy of uncertainty we're coming into. In summary, the market is still really good. Please, 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 if you have any questions, ask me. Do not rely on Fox News and CNN to give you your real estate advice. I'm in the trenches every single day. My team is in the trenches every single day. We know what's going on. And yeah, we sell real estate, so we're gonna make it sound great. Guys, if it wasn't great, I'd be telling you that and I would probably be looking at other things to do, <laughs> but it is great. So I encourage you to reach out. Thank you so much for staying tuned. And please put any questions in the comments below and I will have my end of the year update for you in December, making the bull predictions for 2023.